So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to find God. So I've got a lot of people asking me questions um, about how do you know you have God? How do you know you're walking with God? And, you know, I just have to bring you back to um, the scriptures. Because when we look at the scripture, the scripture identifies a lot of places uh, where God spoke to a lot of prophets. We know about the story about Moses. We know the story about Jeremiah. We know the story about David. Um, these are people who knew God. And if we use them as an example of how we find God, uh, we see that God actually looks for you. Um most of the time, God God will find you and will appoint you with certain things that you have to do. But most of the time, being that we are in our human flesh and we have our human heart, I remember I told you guys so much about there's two different type of heart. There's a heart of man and there's a heart of God. So sometimes I like to ask you guys, which one are you operating under? Are you operating in the heart of God or are you operating in your own heart? So these people, for example, David and Saul are two people we could use as an example. Saul was a man who was after his own heart. David is a man that was after God's own heart. And we see how Saul ended up losing the war and dying with his family and all these things uh, because he was in sin and disobedience because he chose to live in his own heart. He chose his flesh. He chose the love of what he want. He was a son of disobedience, as we can say. Um, but David, on the other hand, was also chosen by God. Many, well, basically, two people are called, and we see this in Scripture. As I mentioned this, uh, Matthew twenty-two, verse um, fourteen. I mean, fourteen, verse twenty-two. We talk about um, how. We know that many are called, few are chosen. So in this instance, we see Saul was a man who was told to do a precise um, job for God. And then also J David was also a man given another job, but both of them was given a kingship job. But we see that David surpassed Saul because David did not care about his heart. David chose God's own heart. And today we have we don't have David, we don't have Saul, but we have the person of Jesus Christ, who is the perfect man that through him we can get to the heart of God. So to find God, you have to search God's heart. You have to search your heart and God's heart, and you have to see can I attain God's heart? You no, know, you can. And the way you do that is through the person of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus is the bridge that connects your heart to God's heart. Remember, Jesus Christ said, can't go to the Father unless you go through me. He said it a lot of times. He's talking about the heart. You know, um, so we see when he shed his uh, blood on the cross of Calvary, he's breaking that yoke that holds us back from knowing God. Because it's not that easy to get close to God. You have to be a man of integrity. You have to be a man of righteousness. Yeah. You know, you have to be a, you know, he described it when he talked about Abraham. You know, Abraham was a righteous man. And that's why he chose to be the father of Israel. He chose him to be the father of Israel because of his righteousness. So I will talk to you more about how to find God now. Why is it important to have God in your life? And I know I mentioned some, some of the questions that we're going to be focusing on. You know, why, you know, what does Jesus Christ have to do with finding God? Okay. All right. So how do you know you have God? Okay. So through Jesus Christ, we, we, we realized that before he even started his ministry, you know, there was uh, a baptism that was done, which is a water. And it's also written in scripture. You cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you're baptized with water and the spirit of God. Okay. It takes the baptism of the water and the baptism of of the Holy Spirit, okay? So when he was baptized by John the Baptist, he then um, received the Holy Spirit by a, a symbol which um, the dove landed on his, you know, on his shoulder, and that's when he received the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I'm not saying that the bird is going to come on you or a dove is going to come on you. No, Holy Spirit comes um, when you accept Jesus Christ, okay? 
Um, yeah, and he mentioned it because he's already been baptized with water, okay? Um, so he has done everything we ever have to do. All we have to do is believe that he is the Messiah, he is God, he is Lord of our life, and he has shed his blood for our sins that we can live in his inheritance. Okay, we are joint heirs now with Jesus Christ. Amen. So we we, we look at this and we, and we can we kind of like dive into the scripture to find out, you know, why, you know, how, how do you know you have God? You know, and you know you're walking with God because you've denied your own heart. And Jesus Christ talks about this a lot too. He said you have to first deny yourself and then take up your cross. Okay? So you have to deny yourself and give your heart fully to God. And I'm not saying give your heart. It's more like you have your heart has to be connected to God's heart. You have to seek, you know, everything that will please God. Your heart has to be about the pleasing of God or, or, or doing what is pleasing to God. Amen? Because you still have a choice to choose your own heart at every any given moment. You could always choose to follow your own will your own heart and not care about what God says and what he's going to do and do what you want to do anyway. Okay. He's given us that free will. This is why we have a soul and we'll go more into that another day. But okay. So you're walking with the Holy ghost. You're going to be talking to God a lot. A lot of men in the Bible and women too, they spoke to God one-on-one. -on -one. You know, and, 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 and sometimes we don't understand because sometimes God will speak to us with situation. He'll speak to us, you know, and, 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 and through the, the mouth of the Holy Ghost. You know, we have to be able to discern, you know, these things and be able to understand how we are able to operate in the spirit and how we, what is the difference between how we operate in the spirit and how we operate in the flesh. So when we understand those differences, and I'll go into that another day, we can now understand if we have God in our life or not. Because if I'm walking in the spirit of God, all right, it's, 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 it's very different from just going to church. You know, it's very different from just clapping my hand and, 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 and saying hallelujah is, is very different. It's more intimate, okay? When you're walking with God, everything that will hurt God will hurt you. Amen? Everything that will hurt God's feeling will hurt you. Because I'm, I'm sure we all know that God has a feeling. Um, you know, he, he's, a, he, he's righteous. You know, he's in righteousness. And, 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 and his will is for us to know him. You know, and he has chosen us to know Christ when Christ is preached to us. He has given us that identity of Christ, even though we don't know Christ yet at that time. But once you have the word of God preached to your salvation given to you through the word of the Holy Ghost, you know, through the scriptures and through the acceptance of, 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 of Christ into your life. You have now chosen to walk with God and go after God's own heart. This is what it means to walk after God's own heart. It's to seek after the person of Jesus Christ. Because you cannot get to the Father unless you have the Son. Hallelujah. So we move on to understand now that the Holy Spirit is, is in us. And we have accepted Christ. And we're walking with God now. The things that we love to do in the flesh, we now start to hate to do because we're walking in the spirit. And how do you get the spirit? You get the spirit by accepting Christ. And sometimes, you you know, you just have to talk to God. You know, just accept, the, accept Jesus Christ and talk to God and ask God for the Holy Ghost. Because David mentioned also, take not the Holy Spirit from me. Take not that Holy Spirit from me. He said it in, in, in Psalms. Well, he's, he was praying for forgiveness in Psalm 51. So you can't ask for the Holy Ghost to come inside of you and walk with you and have a relationship with you. you know. And as you decide to do those things, you have to also understand what you're doing. That means you're, you're deciding to hate your heart and take on God's own heart. Amen. So, Holy Spirit is very important. That's why, you know, the Trinity is always there. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We have to know that this is real. 
and we all they all have there's a part that every each entity you know of God plays in our lives and I'm showing you now that one cannot exist without the other if we want to know God or know that we're walking with God they all exist in one as one amen the heart of God is connected with our own heart through the blood of Jesus and the power of God is demonstrated through the Holy Ghost amen so as we're walking with the Holy Ghost, we see why Jesus Christ is important in this in this um, sense. Because Jesus Christ, without his shedding of the blood, without this proper sacrifice, there will be no unity between man and God. Amen? Because man is, 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 is born evil. Like, we, you know, our heart is evil, you know. And there's nothing that God wants to do with whatever is evil. Okay, um, this is why, you know, he needed to bring us back to himself. And through that, he only want to see his son, Jesus Christ. That's why when you look at the world, the way God sees the world, there is no sin. Because he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ is what he sees. Because his, oh, it's, his blood has already been sacrificed for the sins of the world. Amen. So whenever you take on Jesus Christ, you're no longer considered apart from God, you know, you are now with God for eternity, amen, your sins has been dead to the cross the same way he has nailed it to the cross, and when he um, woke up in the resurrection, he woke up in the newness of God, amen, in the spirit, praise the Lord, so that is also how we walk in the spirit, we also have to wake up out of our flesh, die to our flesh, Take on the cross, plead to God for the Holy Ghost, and walk in His Spirit so that we won't have to, you know, kind of fall back into our flesh, onto our own heart. It's very important to, to plead to God for the Holy Ghost or to, for, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, a pastor can lay a hand on you and you receive the Holy Ghost. You can pray for the Holy Ghost. You can, you know, there's many ways, you know, as long as. You, is your and your desire in your heart, you know, you can receive. Paul received the Holy Ghost when he went when he was blind. You know, he didn't. You know, Jesus Christ says, "Why are you persecuting me?" Okay, and a man, God, God, um, Jesus Christ already told the disciple that a man was gonna lay his hands on him and he was gonna receive his sight back. And when he received his sight back, he also received the Holy Ghost. Amen? So just to tell you that there's different ways it was done in the Bible, um, but we are living in a, in, a, in a day where we have Christ. Yeah, we cannot make mistake of that. We have Jesus Christ. And once you have Jesus Christ, he can lead you to get the Holy Spirit in any way he chooses to. Or right, Amen? So uh, some of you could go through a church. Some of you could go through someone you know you never knew before. Some of you may just go through just talking to God and fasting and praying, you know, and I'll get more into fasting and praying. Um, but some of these things I'm talking to you about, I'm going to go over it more and more in depth, you know, but that's just how, you know, you understand that you have God, you know, and, and how you find God, you know, you have to seek him, you have to, you know, fast and pray, Amen. Because if you don't seek God, you won't know that that's God. When you seek God, he will show himself to you. Amen? Sometimes he'll bring you to a place of desert where, you you know, you just will have to just focus on him alone. There, there will be no distraction or other voices or other things to do. You know that that's God speaking to you. You know that you found God. Amen? And then he'll lead you into, um, I'm getting to know Jesus. And then he leads you into getting to seek the Holy Ghost and receive the Holy Ghost, just like he did with Paul, and changed his name from Saul to Paul before he can use him. He transformed him and changed his name. So it's also important to give up your name. Some of you have names that's connected to evil. You know, you have to let those names go, you know, for you to truly be a man of God or a woman of God. You have to let those um, things that of the past be the past, you know. New things has become new, as the scripture tells us, once you receive Jesus Christ. And, you know, um, so yeah, so we're going to talk more. And I just want to say, 
Um, God bless you. Anybody who have not received Jesus Christ, just repeat this prayer after me. You know, um, I prayed for you now as you repeat this prayer that God will come into your heart, that you will find God, that the Spirit of God will come upon you, and the person of Jesus Christ will be real to you. Amen? As we pray now, God, pray with me, and I pray that you also pray with me at this hour. In Jesus' name, I pray now, let God come into my heart. I pray and I receive Jesus Christ now to be Lord over my life and my personal Savior. I believe that he died for my sin on the cross of Calvary. I believe that he shed his blood on the cross so that I may have a relationship with God through the person of the Holy Ghost. And I pray now that I receive the Holy Ghost to be able to walk in the power of God and to be able to do the things that is pleasing to the God, to, to my God. I also let my heart go. And I pray that I take on the heart of God as I, I pray now that God, please connect my heart to your heart, that I may seek after your heart all the days of my life. And it shall be as I pray now in Jesus' name. And we say amen. God bless you. And I'm signing off. This is Pastor Larry. And it was great having you with me. Bless you.